Okay. Let's see if this is working. Okay. You are live and can totally see you to stop use your encoder. Okay. I guess I have to refresh. Should I? Uh, try. What? Are you... Okay. But now it just says soccer. There we go. Okay, I'll change the save. Guys, can you see this? If you can see this, please write carrots. Uh, yes, we're going to do the voices for this game. Yes. This is part two. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen part one. If you do, that was in the in a previous live stream. Tell us if all our audio levels are okay. Tell us if you can hear the music properly, can if you can hear the, the, the voices properly. That's too close. You definitely need to move that back. Oh, this no, one's it, like... does, it does not. It does? Yeah. My Yeti didn't... What happened to it? You didn't used to do that. What did you do to my Yeti? I didn't do anything to your Yeti. You loosened it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, you can hear us perfectly fine, everything? Okay. So, check us out. Um, we did update the, um, pay, the, not the Patreon, the, uh, GoFundMe. the GoFundMe. Um, we just need a, we just, we updated our goal to a smaller goal. Anything helps. You do not have to, but it's greatly appreciated. Um, and so now we shall begin Cinderella Phenomenon. Yes. Okay. And we are going to continue. Common Root Chapter 2. Yeah, let's do it. I don't see why this is necessary. Of course this is necessary, Princess. You work to show you can be useful. Mm. For the last half hour, Parfait and Dolore have been debating what chores they want to give me. I can't believe they're seriously going to make me work like a commoner. No freeloaders at the marching, remember? And you can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're a homeless peasant. Savage. Being demoted to a homeless peasant is not my fault. Hey, soccer, can I ask you a question? If yes, you can turn my doll idea comment to me, please. What? I, I didn't see any idea. I'm sorry. Um, Isa, do you remember me from his Twitch stream? I do. Hello again, Alice. Thank you for joining us. If you really think about it, it was kind of me to, devo to demote you, not devote you. Mm. Stop teasing her, Delora. Sakura ha has had a lot thrown at her already. I'm only speaking the truth. Besides, working to live working to live is the commoner's way of life. But at least it's rewarding. Mm. So if you're having trouble, if it's just buffering, just try and reload the page. Um, uh, go to OBS real quick just to make sure that it's being the light's being at the bottom. Oh it's oh it's flickering. It's red and yellow, that's bad. I don't know why. Do you have anything else open besides um, let me turn this off. Let me close this out too. One second, guys. We're just closing stuff to make sure that uh, it runs smoother. This is the exact same thing that happened last time. You know? I think it just made it worse. Yeah, that's it. Everything else is closed. Okay. Uh. 
If you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You are no longer a princess, Sakura. Life here at the Marchin is comfortable and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. What you do is your choice, princess. Do I even have a choice? Whoa, everything just got... Not even enough video to maintain some streamers. Yeah, um, maybe I should close up your tabs? Yeah. Not really much for me to close left. You can close out of that. There we go. Okay. Ah, much smoother. Much smoother. There we go. Do I even have a choice? Not really. No. Let's see. Are you sure this is okay? The mic is so far away. Yeah. I'm very uncomfortable with it. It's perfectly fine. How about cooking duties? No way. She'd burn a salad. Mm -mm. She could be a receptionist? Then we'd lose all of our customers. That's... That's probably true. I'm right here, you know. Hmm. Sorry. Do you have any useful skills at all? Oh. So, oops! Do you have any useful skills at all? As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They cleaned my room, helped me dress. How am I expected to possess skills for things I've never done? Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm? Job for our Cinderella. Ta da! Sakura will be in charge of sweeping the marching floors. What? Perfect. Even she should be able to do that. Could you, Princess? What? Why is it still there? I mean, it says the stream. Well, now it's not. I refuse. Oh, wait. I refuse. But look! I even put a cute little ribbon on the broom just for you. It's your very own special broom. A princess doesn't clean. Hard headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. <laughs> Suddenly the broom flies into my hands. I'm pulled helplessly along the things being sweet as the thing begins to sweep the floor. So basically it's like <laughs> Yes, but that's very loud to them. Sorry. I try to pull my hands away, but they may be as may as well be glued to the broom. They do not budge. What have I done? What have you oh, done? yeah. Shit. What did you up? Zeus. Shit, Zeus. Okay, it's back. Okay. What have you done? You should be thanking. You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Delora, isn't this a little too much? Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping. And it will not stop until the floors are spotless. What? Come on, Parfait. We've got time for a cup of tea. But... 
She'll be fine. A little sweeping never killed anyone. Mm. You are dreadful! You're not gonna do this out there where you can plug in an ether and go there. You want to? Okay, we're gonna relocate. Come on. Get, um. One second, guys. One second, guys. We're just we're gonna relocate to the. to the living room. Ugh. I mean, the. The connection's better now. Ow. Where do I connect that? Am I gonna have to connect here? Um, I can bring it around this way. That's no better. <laughs> okay. Does your thing have an Ethernet? I don't know what it looks like. Do you? Um, I don't. You unplug it? What? No, that's it. Mm. I don't think so. No, it doesn't. Oh, I'm sorry! Well, as it's, far as well, I know, it's better. It's gonna be a better connection after that. Anyway, to be closer to me, so. Okay, can you at least plug in my Wi-Fi, my um, battery? Yep. Sorry, guys. Right, you can keep going. You are dreadful. Enjoy your time with Mr. Broom. Wait! Did they really just leave? begins to sweep faster. This, despite my protests, I'm still forced, like a puppet, to sweep the floors with begrudging tense tenacity. <sighs> I can barely catch my breath after that. Princess, poor face at me to check. Oh. How lovely! It's so clean, I can see my reflection on the floorboards. I'm impressed. Can you get your laptop so we can just see how it looks to the other people? Do not even think about stepping into this room with your dirty shoes. Goodness! I didn't know princesses could be such terrifying creatures. Yeah, we are! You are aware that the margin is open soon, yes? The floor isn't good. Sorry. <laughs> ah. Let me. Ah, stupid there. wires. Let me go back. There. The floor isn't go going to stay clean forever. Then do not open the marchin. Hmm. I do sympathize with you, princess. It's difficult oh. adjusting to the commoner's life. Wait, we're off. The Zoom stream is continuing. Okay. What would you know about that? It's still like... There. It's more there. than you think. What? Oh, did I... Oh, did I let that slip? That was my mistake. Karma just smiles at me, his, glee, his eyes gleaming with playful mischief. It's still you. Oh. Mm. He's definitely hiding something. Mm. 
My hands are red and sore from all the sweeping I've done today. I remember the slave Annas offered me when I first woke up in my room. Oh, I remember the salve. Not slave, she's not slave. The salve Annas offered me when I first woke up in my room. Surely that will be, that, surely that will help somewhat. I apply it to my hands and find, to my surprise, to my surprise, that it is very effective. Most of the redness quickly fades along with the pain. Is this what my life will be like if I do not break the curse? Forced to work day in and day out? I cannot let things stay as they are. I must act. I lay down to rest. Tiredness falls upon me like a heavy, suffocating blanket. I close my eyes and feel myself shift into the darkness of sleep. Despite having slept for hours, I'm still tired when I wake. I glance back at my hands and remember the salve's effectiveness. Whatever Al Annas gave me really works. I should ask her to make me more. I feel like this is not the last time I will need it. I must act quick. I must act quickly. The sooner I break the curse, the better. The people who offered to help me are, are all here. Whom should I ask for help? Who should I ask for help, guys? Karma, Rumple, or Rod? Who should I? Who should? Who should help me, guys? Tell is, me. Is anything connected? Is anything else connected to the enemy? Wi-Fi? I don't know. I know Spence uses Wi-Fi. Death of a bachelor. Mm -hmm. Mine is dope. Rumple. Rumple. Karma. Someone said Rumple and someone wants Karma. Rumple. So, are you... Karma. Okay, two for Rumple, two for Karma. More Karma. Here. Karma. Okay, I guess they're going with Karma. Oh, Karma. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Ugh! I find Karma sitting quietly but at the bar. I thought he was the picture of elegance when I saw him at the toy shop, but he's just really conceited. I walk over to where he is. Now everyone's saying Rumple. Too bad, now it's Karma! Oh, Princess! You look stunning as always in your work clothing. He must be mocking me. But does it but it does not matter. I'm here because I want you to teach me about goodness. Not even, not even a compliment in return. I'm rather offended. Mm. Relax, princess. I'm just teasing you. I notice. Now, can you answer my question? Princess, you do so wound me. This is going nowhere. Maybe I should ask someone else. Princess, wait. You made the right decision in coming for me to... Coming to me for help. You made the right decision in coming to me for help, I assure you. Mm -hmm. The best people, princess, look beautiful. The way you look outside has to match what you have inside. How is that possible? How is that supposed to help me? Are you implying that I'm not beautiful? You're six. Of course not. What, I'm talking about the character. That's what she said to the- that's what he said to the care. ARE YOU ASSUMING THEIR GENDER?! Of course not! I only suggest that you smile more often. Smiling will not help me accomplish a good deed. And smiling has nothing to do with beauty. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's not true at all. People who are beautiful smile all the time. Like myself. Oh, why are we doing karma? He's not helping at all. Don't give me that look, darling. A real smile lifts the heart and takes stress off the mind. And? 
Well, in order to do good, you must first change yourself. Make yourself more beautiful on the outside and the inside. I really don't know why I came to him for advice. But what did I expect from such a flamboyant man? He is as shallow as a puddle of water. I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between the floorboards. The wood beneath my feet is covered in a thick mud. Uh, oh no. Oh, stop! I never thought I'd see this. The princess is actually sweeping. I'd say it's more like the broom is sweeping and the princess is just along for the ride. This is probably safe. Lady Parfait, your orders have arrived. Where should I put them? At the back, please. Thank you. I stare at Gar Garlon as he begins to move. <laughs> you! Ugh. You are dirtying the floor! Sorry! Garland dashes out of, across the floor with long steps in an attempt to leave as few footprints as possible. This was Dolores doing, wasn't it? Is it obvious? This has witch having fun. Oh, wait. This has witch having fun written all over it. I need water. Wow, completely spotless. Wait, one spoiler. Don't pick Karma as a partner. Please choose Rumple. Yes, I chose Karma. Bad choice. Well, we'll Ooh. see why. You are the worst. Don't be mad at the broom, princess. It's only trying to help. <clears throat> it's doing nothing but making my life miserable. <clears throat> Lady Parfait, I must speak with you. I look up at the witch as she just entered. She's a regular at the margin, and according to Parfait and Delora, a good witch. She orders tea from time to time. She has mud on her shoes! Why is she glaring at me like that? I believe it's because of your shoes, dear. I have just cleaned the floor. Oh, uh, I I'm sorry. I'll clean up after myself right away. Good. Mm. The princess is something else. I've never seen a witch so frightened of someone before. Yeah. The witch hurried hurriedly cleans up the trap she made coming in before going to speak with Parfait. Even though Parfait says that Delora and this witch is good, I do not trust her judgment. Especially not when she considers Delora, who ruined my life, a good person. I put the broom back in its resting place before double-checking my work. Now that I'm done, I can continue to work on breaking my curse. Whom should I ask to help today? <gasps> uh, uh, should we just stick with karma, guys, or should we ask Rumpel now? Because no one wants Rod, I, I like Rod a little bit. Wait, Rod's my brother, right? Yeah. Okay, no, I don't like Rod. Uh, so, uh, guys, who should I pick now? Rumpel. There's ru one Rumpel. One Rumpel. Rumpel. Two Rumpel. One wow. rod. Rumpel. Okay. Three rumples. Oh, okay. So two rumples. Karma, stupid, go for rumple. Okay. Rumple. Rumple. Rod. Rumple. Uh, we're and, seeing a lot of rumples. Okay, we're so we're gonna go rumples. for rumple now. Um, we are closer to the Wi-Fi. We're like right on top of its box. Yeah. Okay, and go. I find Rumpel taking a break at one of the tables. Surprisingly, he's by himself and not surrounded by the usual blushing ladies. 
You're not surrounded by a flock of ladies? You must have done something to offend them. Rumple looks at me, the surprise apparent on his face. Princess, have you come to mend my broken heart? God damn. You might want to use my computer for streaming from now because it has an Ethernet work. Okay. Well, starting from tomorrow. How am I going to get the boom? It's free. Uh, um, I like. But I'll I have to, to. But I have to sign in. No, I'll just have to do everything we've done so far. Oh! Just fast forward everything. Yeah. Excuse me? I'll just put it on my head. I was speaking with a lady here only hours ago when she told me that she was. that she was. betrothed. Right. Oh. Oh, he's got something. I was speaking with a lady here only hours ago when she told me that she was betrothed to someone else. That happened hours ago and you're still sitting here? Rumple places his chin on the palm of his hand, looking very tired. In mourning, the heart is a fragile thing, princess. Won't you help heal my shattered heart? Mm. Rumple stares at me when I do not answer. That would count as a good deed, you know. Helping you wouldn't count as a helping you would count as a good deed. Doing things out of the kindness of your heart is a good deed, princess. Kindness of my heart. Why would I want to help you when you've done nothing for me? Kindness isn't a thing that needs to necessarily be returned, princess. Single instances of affection can make a heart lighter. Single instances of affection can make a heart lighter. Why does he always go through the trouble of making his words sound so much fancier? I will not help you mend your broken heart because that would be an act of stupidity, not kindness. Rumple's shoulders slumped as he frowns. Oh, but now my heart is even more fragmented. You suffer from a broken heart every day you are rejected. Of course! Because to pour your heart out to someone only to be rejected is a cruel fate, princess. You probably deserved rejection. What with that way you flirt with everyone? So no, I'm not going to help you. Deal with your own broken heart. Dang. I turn around and walk away. The axe rumble puts, our, puts on our annoying. A month has passed and I have yet to complete every one good, even, even one good deed. Not for any lack of trying, though. <laughs> They're saying Sakura, say sorry! <laughs> it's not Sakura, it's not me! <laughs> I have been asking for advice on how to be a good person and receive various answers. What makes someone good? That was not the voice you used for no, Waltz. This is uh, around, around. It was here. Adrian. It was right here. Yeah. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. I think it's important that you consider other people's feelings. Oh. <sighs> what was this again? It's kind of like a deep... deep Patience. There we go. There we go. The ability to soothe even the most broken of hearts. Forget I asked. Bravery. Loyalty. You must be beautiful, both on the inside and out. Right. I must be all of those things in order to be good? According to Parfait, I cannot just pretend. I cannot just pretend. It has to come from my heart. I place my hand on my chest and consider the steady pulse of my heartbeat. That will not be easy. I close my eyes, thinking of all the possible ways I might be able to break my curse. But in the end, my mind is blank. 
Mother, what am I supposed to do? A dream? Your personal feelings are nothing but a weakness for others to exploit. That is why you do not show them. You only show them that you are strong. Why does she look like Marinette? I do not know. Yes, Mother. You must not let false kindness deceive you. People will use niceties to trick you into exploiting your weak emotions. But you can trust me, Sakura. I will never hurt you. I will never lie to you. I am all you need. I love you, Sakura. I love you too, Mother. How are those lessons of yours doing? I hope you're not giving anyone a difficult time. I'm the only one having a difficult time. Have you tried pairing up with someone else? Pairing up? Some of the people in the tavern pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better, are better than one, as they say. It's not a bad idea, but the problem is with her. Who's going to volunteer to pair up with the Ice Princess? She has a point. People may not glare at me anymore, but it does not escape me that I'm still disliked. Most of the boarders at the, boarders at the margin volunteered to help her, remember? And I haven't heard any of them react their, retract their offers. It's only a matter of time. Stop it, Delora. It's your choice, Princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. Would pairing up with someone really help me break my curse? What if they end up being annoyance instead? Princess? Um, excuse me, Princess? <clears throat> Sorry for disturbing you, but you... Just been staring at your tray and the customer is waiting for his order. Of course. Delora has me helping Annis today. The Martian is unexpectedly unexpectedly busy and cannot and they cannot keep with all the customers. Stop daydreaming, Sakura. Food doesn't deliver itself. I don't need you to tell me that. I stretch out on my bed. The stiff mattress does little to soothe my aching muscles. I was on my feet the entire day struggling to keep up with the steady stream of people that came into the marching. I've never seen the marching, seen the marching this busy. I roll onto my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Why don't you pair up with someone? Pairing up might not be such a bad idea. Oh, okay, so I can't... Okay, oh, because remember, these two are locked until I played through... I had to play through these three before I unlock these two. Yeah. So, guys, who should I pick? <laughs> Which guy should I pick to help me? Pair with Rumple. One for okay. Rumple. One for Rumple. So, we have Rumple, Rod, and... Uh, karma. Karma, Rumpel, and Rod. I can't play Waltz or, um, or the other guy, or my knights, because I haven't unlocked him. So Rumpel, Rumpel, everyone wants Rumpel. Oh, the one person said Rumpel is ugly. 
Rumple or Karma? What are the options? Raw, Rumple. More people want Rumple. Okay, I guess we're going to end up doing Rumple. It's your last choices. Rumple, Rumple. One Karma. Okay, so Rumple. Right, no, but there's more freaking for Karma for... I guess we're doing Rumple. All right. Okay, we're gonna do Rumple. Don't worry, we'll be playing this five more times. Cool. Yes. Chapter three, The Flatterer. Oh dear. I guess we should save. Yes. Because now we're in chapter three. Hmm. No, we're trying to yeah. So probably after this chapter, we'll head out. We got a dinner to go to. Yes, because Isa and I are celebrating our four-year anniversary because we can't celebrate it on our actual anniversary, which is on Wednesday. So we're going to be celebrating our four-year anniversary. Um, yeah. Yay, so we got Rumple. I do not know why the first person that popped into my mind was Rumple. Just because he puts on a smile on a lady's face with his flirting does not mean he can help me do a good deed. And yet, here I am. I find Rumple on break, surrounded by a few giggling ladies. His hand makes dramatic sweeping gestures as he showers them with compliments. And you, my sweet, are like sunshine peeking through a clouds on a dark day. You litter the ground with so much golden light and make every flower reach out toward your warmth. On second thought, maybe I should reconsider. Princess! Rumple notice me, how, notices me, however, and, and immediately, however, and immediately waves me over. Mm -mm. Walk towards him, turn and walk away, or should I walk towards him? I guess I'll walk towards him. Hairy arm. I don't want your hairy arm. Thank you guys. It's not our anniversary yet, but thank you. Almost three days. Walk towards. Okay, first person said walk towards, so we'll walk towards him. He's just going to insist I come back. If there's one thing I've learned about Rumple, it's that he is persistent. Hmm. Why do you look so surprised? I assumed you would just walk away like you always do. But I can take this as a good sign, yes. You really did want to see me, princess. <sighs> the silent treat... The silent treatment only makes this all the more mysterious, Princess. And the mysterious is always exciting. What is he rambling on about now? <laughs> Rumpo, why would you deal with someone like her? What? Sakura is like a budding flower. Ha, I got the joke. Because Sakura is a flower. Uh, and I want to do my best to help her bloom in whatever way I can. Oh, you've come, to, you've come to me for advice, right? How did he know? The look of shock on your face is adorable, and so absolutely satisfying. It seems I hit the nail right on the head. Rumple, she obviously, she is obviously too stubborn to admit that she needs your help. These women are infuriating. People are saying we're going to get the bad end now, because I walked towards him. Oops. Oh well. Rumpel leans a little closer to me, and suddenly he's whispering in my ear, Touch my ear and I will punch you. No! 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 No!
<laughs> Stop. <laughs> She's leaning away from me. Hold on. They can't hear you. Let me tell you something, princess. Making a person happy just to see them smile is definitely a good deed. You know they can't hear you, and that was so weird. Sure they can. Stupid. <laughs> Making someone feel important is never a disservice. <laughs> what do you think? I'm pretty knowledgeable, aren't I? Stupid! All he ever talks about is doting on people, flirting with them, and making them smile! Rumple continues talking. Which is why I would make an excellent partner. I take a step back. Rumble is now looking at me with a triumphant smile. How did you... I am very perceptive, princess. You overheard my converse conversation with Parfait. She told me about it. She... did? Only briefly. So you're not perceptive at all? <laughs> princess, you cannot see it. I am drowning in my own tears. He just assumed I was going to be partners with him, which is very annoying. I don't even know why I was considering partner partnering up with Rumpel when he says the same things over and over again. And I do not think I could be around him day in and day out. Oh my, what do I spot here? Delora appears before us. A sly smile on her face. Slacking off, you two? I'm on break! The break ended about five minutes ago, Rumple. And Princess, I think you, there's a broom that needs attending. Fine. There's no use complaining. I would rather get away from Rumple. Rumple turns to the ladies and smiles. My lovely ladies, I will be back later, and I promise that we will continue our conversation without any interruptions. Oh, and Princess? We'll continue our conversation later as well. Ugh. I walk off before Rumpel can try to shower more of his compliments onto me. Making a person happy just doesn't... Just to, see Just to see them smile? Can such a thing really be considered a good deed? Hi. If you're gonna lie down, I am too. Get over here. Get over here! Ah! <laughs> she, she stepped off the cup holder. Uh, uh, or a cup tray, I should say. Uh, the days at the tavern go by quickly over the week. Um, princess? Ugh. Princess? Ugh. You've been staring off into space. I was just thinking. I just finished using Mr. Brew and now I'm helping Al Anis sort some of the shelves in the back. Rumpel has taken up the serving for today. The women always enjoy him, but the men are always glaring at him. They're jealous of Rumpel, I think. Who? The other men. Annis looks over at the men that, that are glaring at Rumpel as he drifts between tables. I'm worried about Rumpel, too. And what are you talking about? You were looking at Rumple with a funny expression on your face. No, I wasn't. My words are clipped and my voice is cold. Annis looks at me, looks at me sadly, but I do not care. What I do is none of her business. I think the girls are jealous of you too. What? I glance around the tavern and notice that there are girls glower, glowering glowering at me. I'm not accustomed to these glares, since people have always looked at me this way. During the times I left the palace, people gave me the same looks, 
But this feels different somehow. Why would they be jealous? Because you're Rumpel's partner. I'm not his partner. You're not? He's been telling everyone that you are. Uh, I never agreed to being partners with him. I felt your longing gaze upon my back, and I have arrived, my princess. Rumpel suddenly appears before the two of us, smiling brightly. I suddenly had a strong urge to slap that smile right off his face. We are not partners. But princess, you asked for my advice. Advice that I gave to you because I care. No one else cares as much as you about you as I. And so I proclaimed us both partners because we are a match made in heaven. Yeah. You're so overwhelmed with gratitude that you are at a loss for words. If I could throw something at you, I would. I punch pa- I, I punch packed with this. A punch. A punch, not I. A punch packed with this much- <laughs> You good there, sweetie? A punch packed with as much strength as your love. I can't. Ugh. Hello, everyone. That's parfait. Damn it. Hello, everyone. It sounds like you're having fun. How is this fun? Rumpel is never fun. All he ever does is spout nonsense. <gasps> he doesn't mean any harm, princess. He just fills, he's just filled to the brim with so, much, so many compliments, and he needs to get them off his chest. Well, he can go direct them at one of his many adoring fans. Yeah, the tickles. I have a mustache. <laughs> Stop. I used to. Oh, I thought. I shift my gaze to Rumpel and furrow my eyebrows at him. Or do you only, or do you only direct them at me because you enjoy how much I ignore you? Stop. <laughs> I only wanted to help, Princess. Well, that's what partners do, right? But we are not partners. Just try this partnership out, Princess. I promise you that I promise it will be worth your while. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, Princess. You can always change partners. Really? Lady Parfait, you've broken my heart. <laughs> and when I say the actual thing, then my character is thinking. You're very good at feeling your broken heart by now, Rumpel. Oh. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. I only needed to speak with Annis to make sure that she doesn't need any help with a particular list. A list? Children who are good and nice. Oh, uh, a list of herbs for, um... For me. Annis has been nice enough to gather herbs for me. Lady Parfait, is this about your body? What's wrong with your body? It's nothing to concern yourself with, Princess. My body is just a little frail because of the burden on it. That's right. Parfait mentioned having to bear the crystal on Lucis. A thought occurs to me as I look at her more closely. What game? It is Cinderella Phenomenon. You can get it free on Steam. Wait, could you use magic to heal yourself? Parfait shakes her head and sighs. <sighs> I don't have the ability to heal. None of us do. Except for one particular witch who calls herself the Witch Doctor. Bye bye, Jim. Witch Doctor? Is something wrong? Rumpel shakes his head and gives her, her a wistful smile. Hmm, that name just sounds familiar. It's likely you heard about her from someone else before. Humans do know of her existence as well. A witch? She's not a fairy? For some reason, I thought fairies would be more likely to heal people, not witches. She is indeed a witch. That is what they say. Hashtag Rumpel rejected. Though I've never met her myself. 
She's the only one who can heal illnesses with magic. She doesn't associate with other witches, though, and keeps to herself. When someone gets rejected now and go to them and say, you just got rumpled. Dang. Nobody, nobody has known where to find her for a very long time. Suffice to say, we could never seek out help from her, even if we wanted to. Mm. No, unfortunately not. Rumpel looks grim, but Parfait quickly dissipates a gloomy atmosphere with the clap of her hands. If Dolores was here, she would say, All right, story time is over! That was all very interesting. Interesting, but it does not really help anyone. Your body is the way that, that it is because of the Great War, then. Like I told you before, the Great War has made my body a lot weaker. This is something that cannot be healed, and I do not have an heir, so... Parfait looks about ready to say something, but goes silent. She has a sad look on her face, and I don't understand why. Annis immediately speaks up. I think I'll be okay, Lady Parfait. I think I'll be okay, Lady Parfait. I was actually going to go to on an errand on an errand run in a few minutes. Do you need any help? I would be more than happy to escort a lovely lady like yourself around town. Annis pulls a list out of out from a bag nearby and holds it out. There are only a few items on the list, as far as I can see. Don't worry about it, Rumpel. It's not that much at all. Rumpel stares at the list. His expression suddenly smooths into something more serious. May I have that? Anna's hands in the list and slowly he takes a pen out from his pocket. I stare as he looks at the list quietly and then scribbles some things down at the bottom. Anyway, he, and he hands it over to Anna. I've added some things that might be helpful. The herbs on that list are for, joint, are for joint pains, and you might want something a little more general. How does he know all that? Everyone is staring at Rumpel with wide eyes. Even Parfait looks impressed. You've used herbs before, Rumpel? Maybe. I don't remember. But for some reason, names came to the top of my head as I was looking at the list. Thank you. It is always my pleasure to help a lovely lady. Now, Annis, please let me accompany you to town. I would love to help with whatever I can, and more names might come to me. That sounds nice. Thank you, Rumpel. You're welcome. Rumpel turns to me, a mischievous smile on his face. <laughs> Whenever he looks at me like that, I know he's going to suggest something ridiculous. Princess, Princess Sakura should accompany us. For the experience. I do not need experience. How are you going to shower people with compliments if you know nothing about them? Being out in town will be good for you. Rumpel has a point. The more you expand your world, the more willing you are to learn about people. See, Sakura, like that's how you help a person. I do not need to be lectured! Oh, Princess, it wasn't meant to be a lecture. I'm just letting you know that experience is invaluable. Come on, Princess, let us escort the lovely Annis around town. What about your work? <laughs> no one seems to have the ah! She bit me. <laughs> no one seems to have thought of, thought of that. So it will be our little secret. <laughs> I slapped his hand away, but he just grins at me jovially. How did I get dragged into this? I did bite him. <laughs> you won't. Wait, did I miss something? I did. Please don't stay, in, stay out too long. We won't. 
I make my way into town. Making my way downtown. <laughs> Walking fast. She's rumbling. Walking faster. Conversations. Into town with Rumple and Annis. The majority of the conversations we have are one-sided, with Rumple giving us both usual compliments. He never seems to tire of it. Rumple helps Annis pick certain herbs and a uh, few other medications, and accepts all of the compliments she gives him with a triumphant smile. I know Annis knows about herbs because she's helped me before, but how does Rumple know so much about them? This must be a part of the past that he doesn't remember. Annis enters the store by herself at one point, leaving me alone with Rumple. I'm a mysterious man, aren't I? I turn to look at him and notice the easy smile adorning his face. A man with amnesia is full of secrets, after all. I bet you're even more curious about me. Women always love mysterious men. I do not particularly care. But, Princess, if my curse is amnesia, then shouldn't you care somehow? As partners, we're going to slip to ha Wow, I thought that said sleep with each other. Okay. As partners, we're going to help each other out, right? I do not see how I can help you with your amnesia. Oh, uh, maybe this... Ah, uh, uh, maybe this is a spell that is only broken by true love's kiss. Shall we see? He leans towards me with a playful smile on his face. I am accustomed to his behavior by now. So this does not faze me, and I merely sigh at his nonsense. <sighs> you already said yourself that you need to gather entries from, from some kind of journal. Aw, oh, princess, you're no fun. A little kiss wouldn't hurt anyone. I would die before I kiss you. Princess, that's so sad. He says that, but he's still smiling. Why is he so unfazed by everything I say to him? You only ever have terrible suggestions. I was making, I was, it was a mistake to trust you might have a good, it was a mistake to trust you might have good advice. But I have great ideas. You haven't helped with my curse at all. I have been trying to. You haven't even told me how to get a good deed. I told you before, princess. Compliments make a person happy. And making a person happy is a good deed. So you're flirting with me women and using shallow compliments on them is a good deed. On the surface, the compliments may seem shallow, but if you swim a little deeper... Complimenting people cannot be a good deed. But making them happy is. All you have to do is listen to people, sympathize with them, maybe get to know them, and you can make them happy by doing even small things for them. Women enjoy the compliments, princess. Besides, how could I see such beauties and not compliment them? It would be a disservice. You give compliments to people you do not even care about. Princess? Rumpel's voice trails off as he stares past me. His smile falters for a few moments and looks of confusion ripples his features. I turn to follow his gaze and see a small boy staring at us. He's shyly hiding behind some kind of notebook. Good boy, Rumpel. There's a, that seriousness again. It was the same thing that happened when he added something to the list for Parfait. Then suddenly the expression changes into Rumpel's usual bright smile. Hello there. Would you like to come and speak with us, young sir? Uh, you don't remember me, sir? Oh, do I know you? I used to come to your clinic. You saved me before. The boy draws closer to us, still sh hiding shyly behind his notebook. Oh, I'm sorry, little sir. I'm afraid that my memories are a bit scrambled right now. I can't even remember my own name. Really? Uh, where's Annis? Why is she taking so long? The last thing I want to hear is a conversation between between Rumpel and some child. He, you made me click too fast. He's going to shower the boys with this boy with compliments too. It's a shame that I can't remember a boy as bright as yourself. 
And there it is. I'm not that bright, sir. Not as bright as you, but I want to be. He holds up his notebook, which has a small... He lost connection. And stream the same thing. He holds up his notebook, which has a small name scribbled in the corner. The words, My Dreams, are written on the front cover of it, with cursive letters. What's this? I want... I want to be just like you when I grow up, so I... So I started a book of dreams, just like my mom told me so. She said I could become a doctor, too, so as long as I do my best. A doctor? You forgot that you were a doctor, sir? Oh. Rumpo, a doctor? The boy continues to hold out the book and finally Rumpel takes it and flips, open, flips it open to the front page. Rumpel is holding the book close to his face so I cannot see it. I rise to the tip of my toes and attempt to look over his shoulder. At first, Rumpel does not notice me as he stares at the page. And belatedly, he realizes I'm there and lowers the book so that I can read too. I lean so close to him, our shoulders brush. My eyes scan over the page quickly. The handwriting is crude, barely readable actually, but I can still make out the gist of it. Rumpel slowly reads the words out loud. When I'm older, I want to be exactly like the kind of doctor that saved me when I had no one else to go to. Uh. The boy's face flushes as Rumpel reads his words aloud before his curious gaze lands on me. I don't remember you. The boy... I look at the boy, irritated. Are you the doctor's wife? Rumpel suddenly looks up, eyes wide. He looks down at the boy, then at me, his face suddenly solemn. I'm surprised by the words that leave his mouth next. Yes, she is. Uh -huh. He takes my hand in his and looks down at me. An almost sad look on his face. What's wrong with him? Dang. Wrong. Wow, I want to comfort him and. Dang! Slap him! What the? Yo, this chick has no chill! Okay, I guess I'll pull my hand away. Yeah, we ain't gonna slap Rumpel. That's, that's something we, know. we ain't doing. He has such a strange look on his face. Slowly, I pull my hand away. But Rumpel holds. But Rumpel holds tightly. But Rumpel holds tightly to it. The sadness in his eyes become intense anxiety, and I see something like fear dancing in his eyes. I... you really think it was my fault? What? Sir? Rumpel squeezes my hand, a little too tightly. He looks at me desperately. I'm sorry. I'm so... so sorry. Let let me go! I managed to pry my hand free. Rumpel looks at me for a few moments, almost bewildered, and then his eyes suddenly widen. He looks back at the journal, then at me. Oh, I think I, I blanked out. I'm sorry, princess. All at once, the Sheba's smile breaks into something cheerful again. He's still smiling at me. Even though I was so curt with him. Rumpel is so confusing. The boy looks bewildered. Don't worry about that, little sir. This is this one here is a feisty thing. I deserved whatever she just did. So she's not your wife, sir? Rumpel looks a little surprised, and then he laughs. Uh <laughs>, <laughs> Unfortunately, no. The beautiful lady here is not my wife. Rumpel absently rubs the back of his neck as he looks up at the sky. I'm not entirely sure of what just happened, but it seems like I recovered something very important today. Or the beginnings of something important. Something important? Is he talking about a memory? 
His, he hands the book back to the boy. Then he leans down and sets a, sets a hand on the boy's head. A bell chimes behind us as Annis comes out. As Annis comes out of the stuff. Stop! My, my princess! <laughs> what, a, what a good burp! He's <laughs> trying to talk and burp at the same time. Carrying a bag filled with what I assume are herbs and medicines. The boy once again cowers behind his book. Oh, who's this? The wonderful little sir that helped me regain a very important memory. An important memory? Rumple stands, looking triumphant. I, my good lady, am a doctor. Oh, really? Truly. Rumple turns back to the boy who he asked a few more questions. He even asked the boy his name. Much to my surprise, the boy shakes his head. I'm not sure you told me your name. I'm sure you told me your name, but I don't remember it. It's like my curse. No one remembers me being a princess, and no one remembers Rumpel's true name. Rumpel thanks the boy again many times over and even buys him a few pieces of candy. The boy's eyes are particularly glowing with excitement, and he does not stop smiling. After we see him off and start to head back to the tavern, I begin to contemplate. I'm curious about something. Oh? You said that you need to fill your journal with memories in order to get them back. But the journal you just read isn't yours. It appears not. It seems that the three entries that trigger my memory just need to be written by people I know. Reading them triggers a memory, and then the full entry probably appears in my journal. I ought to check it when I get back. I see. But even without looking into the entry, a memory came to your mind. A memory came to your mind? Rumpel gives a short, distracted nod. It's not complete, so I'm hoping that something really has appeared in my journal. It feels like it must, considering I remembered something so important. You remembered anything else at all? Hmm. Hmm. The young man that we just met. I believe that he used to come watch me work before. I knew him. He used to look up to me. He was a sweet child. The memory is foggy, but yes, I believe something did happen to him. He became... ill. The details of how I saved him must be in the journal. Even though this does not pertain to my curse, I am curious what his journal might say. I can't remember fully, but the memory feels sad somehow. He turns to me, eyebrows knit together. It's strange to see him with such a serious ex expression on his face. That's you. Oh, I really am sorry about earlier, Princess. I think I was on the verge of a memory, but then it got tangled up in my head. I am surprised by his sudden change in topic. We do have a twitch, by the way. It's Princess Sakura Serenity. I, sh I shake my head slowly. He's quiet for a few moments, before suddenly his smile comes back and he laughs jovially, telling us that there is no point in worrying. At the outskirts, I, I turn, feeling eyes on my back, but no one is there. We give Parfait the medicines we purchased in town as soon as we can arrive back at the marching. Then Rumpel proudly announces that he is a doctor to anyone that will listen to him. Everyone seems happy for him, save for the marching patrons that find Rumpel annoying, who are mostly men. Afterward, Rumpel asks asks Annis if he might be able to take over the medications for Parfait, if only because Annis is busier than him. Rumpel hasn't been at the margin long, and yet he's already found something he can to help break his curse. And then there's me. I don't think anyone will be able to help me. At the end of the night, when I finally have time to myself, I return to my room to rest. The next day, I'm sent right back to my chores. 
Rumpel is nowhere to be seen in the morning, and Anna says it is because he is tending to parfait. He appears later in the afternoon, still full of smiles and slowly flattery as he goes back to serving. How does he have so much energy? At the end of the day, I plop down on the seat, settee, settee to rest. My legs are weak from all the walking I've done today, and I can still feel the tiredness in my arm. We got disconnected. And I can still feel the tiredness in my arms from all the sweeping with Mr. Broom. Princess? I notice Anna standing beneath the doorway, smiling at me uncertainly. Thank you for your work today. Why is she thanking me for work I obviously do not want to do? Uh, Plout, this is Cinderella Phenomenon. It's not as if I asked to do any of this. But you still helped. Anna's nervously shifts on her feet. So, um, I just wanted to say thanks. When I do not make any effort to continue speaking with her, Anna gives a nervous little nod before heading back towards her room. Not long after her departure, I hear, I hear an exuberant and familiar voice. I should count my lucky stars, for they are giving me a rare opportunity to meet with my lovely princess this late at night. I should have gone to my room. Rumple stops before me, winking. The moonlight on your face makes your beautiful eyes sparkle like the most precious gold, princess. I am not in the mood for your flattery. But princess, flattery is just a compliment is just a compilation of compliments. Everyone loves compliments. I do not care for your compliments. Or Lady Anna's thanks, either. He heard that? You should learn to let people spoil you. I stare at him. That is the last thing I, I had ever expected anyone to say. My whole life I've been called spoiled and rotten, the Ice Princess. Even Dolores and Parfait want me to do these good deeds because they think I'm incapable of goodness. I clench my fist and continue to stare at him, not understanding the swell of emotions inside me. Why is he being so nice to me? Your first lesson is learning how to let people spoil you. He draws back his hand, reaches into his pocket, and presents me with a small yellow bag. What is this? The sea line. Oh, for you, my sweet princess. I'll accept the gift. I'm not used to receiving gifts out of the blue. What a shame. Oh, what a shame. I would give you so many gifts if I could, princess. Why? Because people are moved by gifts when they come from the heart. I take the small bag from Rumpel's hand and look at it for a few minutes. Besides, this is both a thank you and an apology gift. A thank you for accepting me as your partner, and an apology for my behavior yesterday. I don't remember what I did, but both you and the boy seemed frightened. Aww. I look down at the little bag. I open it up, and inside is a is a little white chocolate piece of piece fashioned into the shape of a flower. A lily. It's not much, but you absolutely must accept it, princess. Otherwise, my guilt would drown me in dark, so dark shadows of sorrow for the rest of time. Lilies are my favorite flower. They say you give a white lily to someone you enjoy spending time with. Oh, and in floral language, they also stand for purity and majesty. He winks at me. Perfect for you, princess. Why? Why what? Why would you give this to me? No matter what you say about doing nice things for people, I don't see how that applies to me. And why would you thank me for being your partner? I did not even want to be your partner at first. But you do now. Uh, I'm unable to withhold my surprise. Rumpel raises an eyebrow, then sighs. 
Princess, you don't trust compliments, do you? Mother always told me that the people that people were two sided, that they'd say anything to make you believe they were your friend. No. Never fear, my sweet princess. I'll make sure I compliment you until you learn to accept them. But... No buts. I derive my happiness from making ladies like yourself happy. The compliments may seem strange to you, but don't worry. You'll see it in time. See what? The connections between people. You assume I'm just a flirt, but I get to know an awful lot about people. It's the reason I can guess so much about you. What could Rumpel possibly know about me? So, what do you think? Are you more attracted to me now because of, a, because of my mysterious aura, or my doctorly sophistication? He leans closer to me, his eyes sparkling. I could be your own personal doctor. I will slap you if you touch me again. Rumpel pulls back and raises both his hands in surrender. But the smile does not leave his face. You really are hopeless, aren't you? Do you think so? I thought that even the ev I thought that the events from today might have proven otherwise. Oh, speaking of which, I read over my journal earlier. His expression becomes oddly solemn. Shall I enlighten you? Why would you tell me all about this? Oh, you're not interested. I thought you might be since I was your partner. If I don't listen, you'll still tell me regardless. So feel free to share. Rumble sighs as he flips o the journal open. <sighs> Unfortunately, it was not much. The memory began coming together again as I was reading, but a lot of it still doesn't make sense. I glance down at the entry he stopped at. Look at the bottom of the page, princess. I follow his gaze to the bottom of the page and pause, noticing a conspicuous gap. Conspicuous. Conspicuous gap. There's no signature, and I always sign the end of every entry I write. I wonder if that might be the final piece of the puzzle. The final piece of your curse? If my name refuses to show up in the book... Oh, oops. That's that period. <clears throat> If my name refuses to show up in the book, it may very well be the final memory I need to regain. That's not a period, it's gone. You believe that the signature will be what gives you, a tr gives you your true name, then? I have a feeling that might be the case. It was the first thing I noticed when the entry appeared. That would explain why the boy in town didn't know my name either. And there's something else. Something else that's missing? The journal entry is cryptic at best. Vague. Almost like an incomplete puzzle piece. I stare at him, not understanding. Slowly, Rumpel begins to explain. It says here that the boy's family rushed him to my clinic. He had a terminal illness that I could not cure. Still you. Oh. He was at death's door, and I couldn't see him. But he's still alive, isn't he? He even said you saved him. Yes, there is a resolution in the journal, but it is not very helpful. I glance down at the journal entry as Rumpel continues to speak. I refused to give up. I knew that there had to be a way to save the boy. I never gave up on my patients. In the journal entry, I described someone who came to help me save the boy. He lifts the book and points to the words, reading them aloud. I met her for the first time tonight. She told me she had some way to help the boy, so we struck a deal. I hope I do not come to regret this. He snaps the journal shut, startling him. He sighs as he runs a hand through his hair. That's it. Someone helped me somehow, and I made a deal. I'm assuming that this is related to my curse, but I can't say how. Why would you write so vaguely? I wish I could ask. I wish I could ask my past self that same question. 
So in the end, you're still not sure when you were when you were cursed. Rumble pauses, then shakes his head. I believe it started here, not the curse, but the events that led to it. There's a reason this is the first memory to be triggered. It's important. For a few months, the two of us are quiet. Mo moments, not months. For a few moments, the two of us are quiet. Rumpel's curse is a mystery, not because he's hiding it like Karma is, but because he does not understand it himself. After a few moments, Rumpel begins to laugh, breaking the silence. I looked at him, startled. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, it's it's not funny. It's It's just... This is all very mysterious, isn't it? And my mysterious past makes me more alone, doesn't it? On the on the next like throwaway like random man Ran number three, I will use an black boost. Yeah, because you kind of have a set voice now. Oh wait, and my dress ribbons are fall off, and my dress can fall off if I don't fix it. If only Rumple could take such a serious moment and change it into this. Well, what do you think, Princess? Are you drawn into the Are you drawn into the mystery of it? <laughs> Good answer. I have no choice. You tell me even if, even if I didn't want to know. Oh, but you do. I can see the curiosity in your lovely golden eyes, and I could see it earlier today too. Thank you for accompanying me to town. I believe that only met. I believe that I only met the boy because you were there to guide my way. You were looking for medical supplies. The boy appeared though through mere coincidence. No, it was more than coincidence. It was destiny. Do you believe in destiny? Oh my god. Fine, whatever you say. Listening to him is exhausting. It makes me realize how tired I am. And all of these revelations are making my head spin. I'm going to bed now. I'm too tired for this. It has indeed been a busy day. We will continue this enlightening discussion some other time. Perhaps. I turn to walk away with the, with the little chocolate in my hands. As I walk back towards the darkness of the hallway, Rumpel's soft voice echoes behind me. Sweet dreams, princess. This. Yay. Yay! So we're gonna save it right now. Yep, we're gonna save this. And we have a dinner to get to, everybody! Okay, goodbye! Yep, so, now it says we're in the rumple route. Yes, so thank you all so much for joining the stream. If you like streams and you want to check them out, we do have a Twitch. It's Princess Sakura Serenity. You can tell that it's gonna be ours because it has our it has our, our it has our, it has what we are looks on it. Um, and right now over on that channel, what's happening is a Pokemon Red slash Blue Mizlock and a uh, Fire Emblem Sealed Swords fighter. Okay. Well, our next next Sunday we will be. Um, yeah, next Sunday. Next Sunday we will be um, doing parts, uh, chapters, four th chapters four and five. Yeah, right. Four no, five. yeah, four Correct. and five. So we'll be there, and so. And maybe if we wake up early enough Wednesday, we can do one chapter. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because there are ten chapters per group. Yes. So I'm I'm guessing that. So what we should do is that. Play it because I have saved over the data, so play it through again and just like start where it makes me make a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we'll do after we finish this route, and it, let's explain a little further, is that basically when we finish this route, we'll start up a new one the week afterwards. But it'll start from the time of who should we be partnered with. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to start the stream. Yeah. So thank you everyone so much for joining. If you like this stream. Give it a thumbs up. 
and spread the word that we're streaming on Sundays. And hopefully next Sunday our Wi-Fi won't be so poopy. Poopy doo-doo butter. Bye. Peace.